In this video, we will discuss Ocean Systems' newest product called the Omnivore. The Omnivore is a revolutionary and easy-to-use digital video and image acquisition device for Windows-based computers that can be used by law enforcement out in the field or back in the office to capture uncompressed video and or image evidence. Over the next 60 minutes or so, I'll review the Omnivore product in detail and train you on how to use it to capture, store, play, export, and distribute uncompressed digital video and or images from any Windows-based computer system. Before we begin, I'd like to provide some background on how the Omnivore came about and also let you know about some prestigious recognition the Omnivore recently received among the law enforcement community. With the advent of more and more video surveillance systems being added in society every day, law enforcement is constantly challenged to figure out how to most easily play, capture, and store video from an onslaught of thousands of different DVR systems and proprietary video players which are required to view the recorded video once the video is retrieved from the scene. Based on a lot of feedback from many of our friends within law enforcement, the Omnivore is a specially designed 32 gigabyte thumb drive device made specifically for law enforcement agencies to be able to capture uncompressed crime scene or other video and or images from Windows based computers which could then be easily stored and exported in various forensically accepted formats. Unlike any other video capture program that has previously been available to law enforcement, the Omnivore was designed to not only be able to quickly and easily capture uncompressed video in both Windows-based and Linux-based DVRs, but to be able to do so without dropping any frames that are presented to the proprietary viewer on the original DVR system. Ocean Systems has tested the existing video capture programs that we've been aware of that have been in the marketplace, and all of them drop frames. The thing is that most of them not only drop frames, they don't even acknowledge that frames are being dropped, or if they do, you don't know how many frames were dropped. Well, the Omnivore solves that problem too. If you look over to the right side of your screen, you may also be interested to know about the 2011 Cygnus Law Enforcement Innovation Awards, which were recently announced at the IACP conference in Chicago. The Innovation Awards recognize new products and services introduced to the law enforcement market during the year. Manufacturers submit their newest and most innovative products for evaluation from a panel of independent law enforcement judges. This year, the Omnivore was not only a top three finalist in the category of forensics, but for the Paramount Award, which is where judges were also charged with selecting a single best law enforcement product of 2011 from among all entrants in all categories, the Omnivore was a top three finalist there as well. Okay, let's get started. First, I'd like to show you what you receive when you invest in an Omnivore and then let you see how you can easily manage and update the Omnivore software as needed. When you receive an Omnivore, here is what's included in the box. You'll find an Omnivore in a small black case that has a convenience clip on it so that you can clip it on your belt and take it anywhere you go. You can also certainly just put the Omnivore itself in your pocket or even attach it to your keychain. Also in the case, we include a USB extender and for those captures from a Linux-based DVR system, we also include an extendable network cable and a crossover cable adapter. You'll also find a CD called the Utilities Disk that looks like this. This contains the Omnivore Manager software. As mentioned earlier, the Omnivore resides on a 32 gigabyte thumb drive. On the drive, there are three partitions. One of them is a CD-ROM partition where the software is located, and then there are two data storage partitions, and of those, one is secured and password protected, and the other is unsecured. When we ship the Omnivore to you, we split the storage space by allocating 50% of the available storage to each partition. However, we also provide this separate CD, which contains software that allows you to change the password on the drive, and which also allows you to reinitialize the drive, which gives you the ability to reset your password reallocate the size of each storage partition, and even secure erase the secured partition of the drive. Here, let me show you how easy it is to use. When you put the Omnivore Utilities Desk into your computer, CD-ROM, or DVD drive, you will see a red icon with a padlock graphic like this one. To manage your Omnivore software and storage space, simply double-click on this icon. 
When you do, uh, the Omnivore Manager interface will appear, and you have two options. The first one is reinitialize drive. The second one is to change your password. To change the password, simply click on that button, enter the current password of the drive, and then enter the new password, confirm it, and click OK, and you will have changed your password. To reinitialize the drive, just click on the reinitialize drive button, and you'll be presented with a NAG screen that warns you that if you didn't first save all of the data from the secured and unsecured partitions of the drive, that data would be lost upon reinitialization. We also let you know that this process is irreversible, so that if you didn't save off the data on that drive and proceeded with this exercise, that data would be lost, and even if you call us, we would not be able to help you recover the data because it would be gone. Once you're ready to proceed, you just type proceed in the field and click OK. And you'll be presented with another screen, which is called the partition allocation screen. This is very simple. This allows you to readjust the size of each partition. And to do so, simply use your mouse to grab the slider bar. And when you move it to the right, that will increase the secured side or secured partition of the drive. And when you move it back to the left, it will increase the unsecured partition. There's also an option to format up to 4 gigabytes the unsecured partition as a FAT32 partition. If you don't choose that option, the default will be NTFS. Lastly, on the screen, you have a wipe secured partition option. Most of you know that when you delete data from a computer, uh, the data actually still resides on the disk and is not erased until it is slowly overwritten with new data. In this case, if you did want to permanently erase any data on your secured partition such that it cannot be recovered, you would select this option, and the omnivore will write blanking zeros over that data so that it will never be recovered. Once you're ready to proceed, you would click OK, and that will reinitialize your drive. OK. Now, let's talk about how you'd update the Omnivore drive when Ocean Systems releases a new version of the software. This is a very simple process, too. Anytime there's a new version of the Omnivore released, Ocean Systems will send out an email announcement to all customers who have purchased the Omnivore. Within that email will be a link that takes you to a short form that you complete, and that form simply lets us know which agencies have updated their software versions. Once you complete that form, you're taken to another link that allows you to download the latest version of the Omnivore software. Now, when you download the Omnivore update software, you will see the icon that you see here, which has a red background with a black arrow facing up. To update your Omnivore software, simply double-click on this icon. When you do, you'll be presented with the Omnivore updater screen. It's easy to use. Uh, it lets you know the serial number of your device. It shows you the current version on your drive. And by the way, you should have your drive inserted into the active USB port on the computer that you're running the updater software from. There's additional information that lets you know that in this case, Omnivore secure and unsecure partitions uh, will not be affected. In other words, data will not be deleted, nor will it clear any of your usernames or passwords. When you're ready to go, you just, again, type the word proceed to continue and click OK. Since my drive has the most recent version as of this presentation, we will skip this, this portion. Okay, the Omnivore can be used by many different units or personnel within any law enforcement agency, and a single Omnivore drive can be shared across multiple users. You should be aware that the current version of the Omnivore does not include audio capture, but Ocean Systems does plan on a future version that will have that feature available. So, for example, a first responder might use the Omnivore to capture uncompressed video and or image evidence at a scene to be able to quickly print and or email images of a suspect or vehicle for a BOLO that can then be quickly distributed throughout law enforcement. Then, a forensic video analyst at the agency can use the Omnivore to quickly and easily view the video, and if they have the professional tools to enhance that video, they could then proceed in that direction. And they don't have to be concerned about whether the proprietary player is available because they can view the images and video directly from the Omnivore viewer. And the Omnivore viewer can be freely distributed to any command staff or DA or prosecutor's office 
so they too can quickly and easily view the captured video and their images without having to install the Omnivore Viewer software on their system, nor do they need to be concerned with whether the proprietary player is available. Also, you and they don't need to worry if they have Windows Media Player or VLC or QuickTime installed on their computer either. Finally, anybody you send the Omnivore Viewer to with the raw video can also export uncompressed TIFFs, bitmaps, .avi, or .mov movies whenever they want. Now, let's look at the Omnivore itself, and I'll show you how easy it is to use. When you insert the Omnivore into an active USB port on a Windows-based computer, one of three things happens. Either the Omnivore interface will launch by itself, or depending on the Windows operating system that you're on, the autoplay window might open and you would launch the Omnivore from there. Or if you're on a really old Windows operating system like Windows 2000, you may have to go to Windows Explorer and launch the Omnivore yourself from the Omnivore drive. In this case, just look for the red Omnivore logo and double click on it, and then just double click on the Omnivore.exe file. As previously mentioned, you can use the Omnivore to capture direct from any Windows-based DVR, or you can connect to a Linux-based DVR from your laptop, and then simply use the Omnivore from your laptop to capture from these systems also. The Omnivore includes, on the drive itself, a step-by-step -step guide that walks you through the Linux-based capture scenario. Now, let's look at the Omnivore interface. As you can see, the Omnivore always opens on the default screen called the Session Info screen. There are five tabs across the top, and the workflow is from left to right. So once you've completed each screen, just click on the next tab to the right to continue. Along the bottom of the interface, you'll see various icons. And when you place your computer mouse over each tab, there is bubble text that will appear that identifies the function of each. The first icon is a storage meter that lets you know how much storage or free space is available on any partition or drive storage device that you're saving data to. The next icon, which is depicted by the image of the camera, sets your capture to still image mode. The one after that sets the omnivore to video capture mode. And here, whichever one is red is the active mode. To the right of that is the record or capture button. You then have a file prefix name prefix field, which I'll talk about. There's the omnivore viewer. There's the lock or unlock icon to secure or open the secure partition on your drive. And then the last one uh, allows you to collapse or expand the Omnivore interface in the event that you have limited real estate on your screen. So let's begin with the session info screen. You'll see here that there are three fields in red text. These fields are required. Uh, the other fields are optional. The session info screen is used to enter in information about the case or capture you're about to perform. You'll see that the first field is already populated with a date and time. That's because the Omnivore pulls the date and time from the system that you insert the Omnivore into as soon as you put it into the active USB port. If that information is incorrect, uh, this field can be edited, so you would just enter the correct date and time you need to record. Now, uh, be aware that the Omnivore clock is a 24-hour clock, so that you would need to enter the time accordingly. The next field is the username field, and there's a drop-down menu here. If this is the first time you're using the drive, or if you'd like to add new users, just click on the Add Edit button, and then click the Add button, and enter the user information. The only field that is required is the username field. The user ID field can be used if you want to uh, set a badge number or employee ID number. And further, you could fully identify the user by putting in the first and last name. When you're finished, click Save. You'll see the information is saved. And when you come back to the username dropdown, you'll see the new user added there. If you want to delete a user at any time, just select the user from that dropdown list, click Add Edit, click the Delete button, and confirm and that user will then be deleted. The case ID field is used to enter the name or case number, uh, the case name or case number. Uh, some agencies use alphanumeric characters. Others just name the case. For example, they might say 7-Eleven robbery. 
Now in the optional fields, if you want, you can put in a physical location of the scene or where the DVR is located. And then you can also type in any notes that you may want to in the notes field. All of the information from the session info screen will be included in the Omnivore report that we'll show you shortly. When you're finished here, again, just click to the next tab to the right. In this case, it's the output settings screen. Here, you will choose the uh, format of the images that you want to save. The default is uncompressed TIFF. You can also choose uncompressed bitmap. You will also select your save to location. You can see the default is the unsecured partition of the Omnivore thumb drive. You will also note that the secured partition is grayed out. The way that you open or unlock the secured partition, again, you just come down here to the padlock. You enter in your password, click OK, and now you'll see that the secured partition is available. If I come down to the storage meter, I can see how much free space is on my secured partition. In this case, I have less than 2 gig on the secured side, and I have a little under 28 gig on the unsecured side. Uh, there are a couple of reasons to have two different partitions. One of them is that uh, the Windows operating system will only recognize the, the unsecured partition until you unlock the secured partition. So if I open Windows Explorer here, you can see both the secured and unsecured, and that's only because I unlocked the secured partition. Now watch as I lock that partition up again. And the way to do that is just click on the image of the padlock, and it will lock that partition. And when I do, the only thing that is seen is the unsecured side. So, for example, if you were out at a scene and maybe it was at a mall and there was a CVS pharmacy or something that had a Kodak uh, printing kiosk, you could actually insert your omnivore into a kiosk like that, and that system will recognize the unsecured partition. So if you had any pictures that you wanted to print quickly, you would need to make sure that they're on the unsecured partition. The secured partition is really for situations when you maybe have confidential or sensitive data. Maybe you have a kiddie porn case and there's video involved and the uh, persons at your agency are limited as far as who can even see or have access to that. So that uh, video might be saved onto the secure partition such that only the person with the or person or persons with the password would be able to access that data. Another scenario might be if you're capturing back at the office, maybe you're capturing some video from YouTube or Facebook or you're out at a scene where you're capturing from your laptop to a Linux DVR system. In this scenario, you can choose My Computer, select Browse, and then just go to one of the drives on your computer, such as the C drive. When I've done that here, you can see when I look at my storage meter that I now have almost 400 gigabytes of storage available. For the purpose of today's video, we will just stay on the Omnivore thumb drive and in fact, I will choose the secure partition because I want to show you how the amount of available space will affect the amount of video that you can capture. So we'll start with the secure partition and then go to the next screen. Before I go to the next screen, just note that there is root path, end path, and full path information. And in the full path, you can see that we're building the file name. It says Secured Omnivore. It has the username and the case name listed. When I click on Date Time Sync Screen, uh, you'll see the information here. And I want you to know that this is an optional screen. Uh, you would only use this screen in the event that you come upon a DVR system that has an incorrect date and or time. The way that this screen is used is the first thing you would do is enter in the correct date and time from your watch or your iPhone or Nextel phone. And once you do that, you click the Set Sync button to the right. You then need to enter the incorrect DVR system time. And let's just say that that was uh, October 24, 2011 at 2.15 in the afternoon. Now when I click Set Sync again, I'm presented with the time offset, which is the difference between the correct time and the incorrect DVR time. In this case, it was 14 days and over 19 hours difference. You're also presented with what's called the time conversion tool. 
And this is a tool that utilizes the time offset information to help you quickly find the video that you're looking for. And the way that this works is, let's say for this 7-Eleven robbery, we had a witness that reported that the clerk in this incident was stabbed at 10.30 p.m. on October 28th. So that's the date and time you would enter, 10.30 p.m. on October 28th. And now when you click Convert, the converted time shown should be the time that you could go to on the DVR that has the incorrect date and time to find the incident that you're looking for because we've used that offset information to calculate where you would find that. In a scenario, conversely, where you don't have a dispatch time or witness uh, report time, once you do find the video, you can come back to this tool and do a calculation to convert the time that you found the video to the actual date and time when the incident occurred. So let's say it occurred on the 29th of October at 9.30 p.m. Now when I click convert, the converted time will be the actual time of the incident. If you do elect to use the screen, all of this information will also be included in your omnivore report. The next screen is the video setting screen. And when I click on that tab, you see that there's another screen that opens, which is like a charcoal gray color. And that's called the overlay screen. The way to think about the overlay screen is like an old piece of carbon paper, such that anything behind that screen, when you're capturing still images and or video, will be captured, as you'll see shortly. There are a number of options on this screen that I'd like to review. The first one is the close button. If I click on that, the uh, screen goes away. And to bring it back, you just simply click anywhere on the video settings tab. You can also drag and change the size of the screen by dragging on the sides or the corners. And if you do that and want to reset it, you would just click reset and that will put it back into its original position. There is the ability to change dimensions manually. So if you wanted to be precise and say you wanted to enter 640 by 480, that will also change the size of your screen. You can show the dimensions and you can disable capture sounds. There are capture sounds, or sound effects rather, when you're capturing still images, it sounds like an, a real camera taking a picture. And when you're capturing video, there's a little countdown clock that has some sound effects. And you can disable those sounds here. Now notice there's also an option to change the background color. And there's a transparency slider. So if I move that transparency slider, you can see what's on or behind the screen, depending on how you move that. You also have the option to change the background color. So if I wanted to change it, for example, to yellow, I can do that. Watch as I move or resize the overlay that uh, dimensions shown are changing in real time. Now, when you're ready to capture some video and or images, you'll see that there's one more option on the screen that says snap to closest window. If I check that box and I grab the overlay, you'll see as I move it around that it places a red bounding box around the area that I'm moving the screen toward. And that's for when you're ready to capture video. If you move it toward the video window that you want to capture to, once you let the mouse go, it will snap to the area that had that red bounding box around it. In this case, I'm snapping it right to the video screen. One thing you might want to do before you capture is, again, if I uncheck the snap to, I can resize this window. So maybe I want to actually take a picture of the video player itself. So if I go up here on this LWT viewer and click help, it says about, and then it tells me the version number and even the manufacturer. One thing I can do is size the overlay over the entire viewer and take a picture of that. I'm going to actually put this on my unsecured uh, drive. And when I'm ready to take a picture, I just make sure that I'm in still image capture mode. And that's, uh, you'll know that because it's red. And then click the capture button. You'll hear the sound effect I referred to, and then you'll see that overlay screen flash. That means the image was just captured. And then what I could do is I can 
just come back here and click snap to again to be ready to capture my video. And I'll show you that picture here in a little while. Again, I'm going to start on the unsecured, excuse me, on the secured partition. Now, another thing I'd like to let you know about is one of the features uh, allows you to capture time code even when it's not present or displayed on the video you're capturing. If you look at this player, while there's no time code on the video, there is, in fact, a time code up here on the top right corner of the player. And if you go back to the video settings screen and click on Capture Time Code, check that box, you'll be presented with another overlay screen. And all you would need to do is drag that with your mouse and resize that over the timestamp in this case. And when we get ready to capture this video, it will capture both the video and the time code simultaneously. And the Omnivore will integrate those nicely in the preview viewer that you'll see here shortly. Another option here is to stop capture on drop frame. One of the most powerful aspects of the Omnivore is the ability to do what we call an optimization test. And in this case, when you conduct this test, the Omnivore will determine the initial average playback rate of the player, and it will also test the hardware on the system and determine how much memory is available. We'll then use those calculations to estimate the amount of video you can capture from this player on this system without dropping a single frame that's been presented to the viewer. And this box down here, Stop Capture on Drop Frame, was added so that if you begin a capture and maybe you get distracted by a colleague or command staff, you're talking to a business owner or a store clerk, if you have that box checked, the Omnivore would be smart enough to know to stop the capture before any frames might drop. Now, the way that this optimization test works is as follows. You'll see there are three steps here. You open the video in a player. You size the overlead to the video, which we've done. You click Optimize, and then you start the video. So we'll do that now. I'm going to make sure I'm in video mode. Click the Optimize button, and then start the player. You'll see that it's conducting a test. It says Sampling Playback Rate. And when the test is complete, if you look over on the right side of the video settings screen, the information will be presented there. When the test is complete, you can stop your player. And in this case, it shows the initial average playback rate of this player is 10 frames per second. The Omnivore will double whatever that number is. And for the capture, it will sample the video at twice the initial playback rate. So in this case, the Omnivore will sample this video at 20 frames per second. And you can see here, based on the calculations, that the Omnivore has determined you can capture 10 minutes and 17 seconds of this video from this player on this particular hardware. Now, I want to draw your attention over to the left side, right above the Optimize button. You may have noticed that there's a sentence there. And this is a suggestion based on the test that was conducted. And it says, if capture duration is not long enough, go to the Output Settings tab and direct the Save To location to a drive with more free space. So if I go back to the Output Settings tab, you may remember that I selected the secured partition, which really only had less than 2 gigabytes of storage. Well, if I follow that advice and select the unsecured partition, I now have almost 28 gigabytes of storage. So let me do that and then go back to Video Settings and conduct my optimization test again. Now remember the first time I had 10 minutes and 17 seconds. Let's see what it does this time. You click Optimize, and then I start my player. And again, it takes about 10 seconds. And when that is finished, I'll stop my player and look over here to the right. Again, it still shows 10 seconds, excuse me, 10 frames per second. Uh, we're going to sample at 20 frames per second. But now, because I increased the size of my Save To location, I now have two hours and 40 minutes of this particular video on this particular system that I can capture without dropping a single frame that's been presented to the viewer. So I think I'll stick with that for now. The last thing I want to show you is the file name prefix field. Let's say there are multiple cap cameras that I need to capture. In this case, there are a number of cameras, and I'm going to start out with camera 3. So I can type that in here, camera 3 to be able to distinguish one camera from the other very easily when I'm looking at them later. 
As you see at the bottom, the path now says that we're on the unsecured partition. It has the username, the case name, and it's showing me that it's camera three. You also see the FPS, in this case, 20. If I click on that, this allows me to, if I want to sample at a higher rate, it allows me to do that here. We would suggest that you leave it uh, as the omnivore determined it should be, but if you have some reason where you need to change that, you can do that here. Now when I'm ready to capture, again, I make sure that my video is where I need it to be to start, and I will press the record or click on the record or capture button. I'll see a countdown clock, and when that gets down past one, I start my player. At the bottom, you'll see the number of frames being captured on the videos on this omnivore interface. On the left side of the colon is the number of frames being captured. The right side is the number of frames being dropped. When I'm finished with my capture, I can just click Capture Record again. I'm then presented with the preview viewer. Well, remember that we captured the timestamp from the top right side of the player, and the omnivore has placed that under the lower left portion of the video. If I put my mouse over the uh, scrub bar, it tells me to play the video. I can use my right keyboard arrow, and that will play the video forward. And to play it in reverse, I just press my left keyboard arrow. I can also grab that slider with my mouse and scrub through the video however I want. And you'll also see that there's a frame counter there, so that at any portion in the video, I know exactly what frame I'm on. And there's also a total number of frames indicated over at the right. When I'm ready to save my video, I click Save, and that video will be saved to the Save To location that I chose on my output settings screen. Now, as a first responder, my, my task, if I just had that one camera to capture, is complete. But before I leave the scene, I may want to just double check that I have what I need. And the way to do that is click on this last tab called Utilities. And on the Utilities screen, there's a button that says Launch File Explorer. When I click that button, it opens the opens right to uh, the location where the video and in this case images were saved. Now if you remember I took a picture of the player. I have that here as an uncompressed TIFF and then I have the original copy of the original video which is saved as an uncompressed raw file and the format is .omv for omnivore. In both cases I have a report if I want to look at that report, again, it tells me that the camera three was the video that I saved. And if I open that report, uh, you can see that the omnivore capture report includes all of the following information. I have the omnivore version number. It tells me the capture was a video capture. It gives me the file name, the date and time, all of the information, excuse me, from the capture info screen the date time sync screen, all of my capture settings, and even my output settings, including the number of frames captured and the number of frames dropped, if any. In this case, there were none. This information in this HTML file can be printed and be made available with your video images. Now, again, as I mentioned, as the first responder, your task is complete. Now what you can do is you can bring the omnivore back to the office and maybe you want to provide the video to a forensic video analyst or, or others, command staff, whoever, you maybe you needed to get it over to the district attorney's office. You have a couple of options here. One option is that you can open the drive, right, as I'll do here, and move my omnivore out of the way. One thing you could do is you could just drag the omnivore viewer off of the drive and put it on a desktop or put it onto a thumb drive and also grab the raw file in the case of a video that you captured and put that on the thumb drive also. You could then provide both the viewer and the raw video to anybody and they could open that viewer on their own desktop and be able to see the video that you captured in the uncompressed format. Now another thing you can do is you can just hand them the drive, move this out of the way, and when they launch the Omnivore down at the bottom, again there's this play button that says Omnivore Viewer. 
if they just click on that omnivore viewer they'll be presented with the omnivore viewer screen where they could click file open omv file and that will take them right to the location where the video was saved and when they double click on that it will open what's called the file information screen which is just some summary information about the capture that we did here when you click OK, that information goes away. If for some reason you need to get it back on the Omnivore Viewer, just click Edit and File Info, and that will return that blurb of information. When you click OK again, you are presented with the video that was captured. Again, we have the timestamp right there. Again, you can play that video by using your right and left arrow keys, and you can also grab the slider with your mouse, and there again is a frame counter there for you. But in the Omnivore Viewer, you also now have the ability to mark in or mark out. And for those of you who may not be familiar, what that means is suppose you just need a short clip of a, you know, maybe you need a minute of the 10 minutes that was uh, recovered. You could set the video to where you want it to start, click mark in, and then set it to where you want it to stop, click mark out. And now you can export just that portion of the video or the frames that are in that portion of the video. And the way that you do that is you go up to File and click on that, and you'll see that there are a number of options. The first ones that I'll point out is that you can save this video as an uncompressed AVI or an uncompressed .mov for QuickTime. You can also save every one of the frames as an uncompressed bitmap or as uncompressed TIFFs. So let's say I wanted to save those frames as uncompressed TIFFs. I would click on that gives me the option to save an image uh, every nth frame. If I leave it as one, it'll save all frames. This can come in handy for those who are aware of iframes, and if you can identify which nth frame is the iframe, you can export just the iframes, for example. Or even in a multiplex camera situation, every fourth frame is camera four, you would be able to export just the frames from camera four in that example. And in that case, you would type in the number four if you wanted to do that. We're going to leave it as one for now. You would click Browse to determine where you want to save this, these images. And I created a sample image folder. And I'll call it Omni. Click Save. And when I'm ready to save, I'm going to actually open this folder for you to see. When I click OK, you'll see those images save into that folder. All of them are uncompressed TIFFs. And in this case, we also have the timestamp of each of the images next to it. So you have the image and then the timestamp, the image and then the timestamp all the way through. If I wanted to then save BMPs, I could again do the same thing. Just go to the desktop, click on sample images, and I'll call it Omnivore. And when I click save and OK, you'll see all of the bitmap images saved there as well. Then if I'm ready to save out, let's say, a .mov file, an actual clip of this movie, and again, if I wanted to, I could actually clear mark in and out points. Let me do that here first. Clear them. Maybe I want to save the whole video as an MOV. When I do that, the save options, you'll see that the Omnivore remembers the original frame rate from the player. In this case, it was 10 frames per second. You can change that if you want to. Again, we would recommend leaving it as the frame rate that was determined by the Omnivore Optimization Test. But when you're ready to do so, you click Save. And it'll ask you where you want to save that video. And we'll call it Movie. And so now, it's saving the Omnivore video in the location that you just saw, that we saved to. When that is finished, you now have an uncompressed .mov file that you could play in a QuickTime player, which you'll see here in a moment. And again, I'd like to point out that there is a, there's two files that are saved. One is the actual movie file, and that's depicted by the movie, in this case, dash v for video .mov. And then the other file has a dash t .mov, and that's the time code movie. So let me just drag those off here, close my sample images window. So here's the video. 
when I open that, it'll open in QuickTime. And I can play that, the original frame rate. And then here's the timestamp, again, as a separate move. Now, those that have an AVID system or a nonlinear editor, if you wanted to, you could take these two files and in an AVID system, you could AMA them into the AVID, bring them both down to the timeline, and then you could do a picture in a picture, and you could place that timestamp anywhere you wanted on the video. Now, a couple of other options that have been added to the Omnivore. Again, if I click File, you'll see there's an option to batch convert. If I click on that, this gives me the option, let's say I had captured four different movies, you know, from four different cameras at the scene. Uh, or maybe I had 16 movies that I captured from the scene. This gives me the option to convert all of them at once. So if uh, with just a couple of clicks, I can save all 16 of those raw OMV movie files out to uncompressed.mov files. And then I can go to lunch and all the work will be done while I'm at lunch. Or I can go home and come back to work the next day. And it'll be done for me and it'll tell me how many files have been converted. My choices are to export uh, all of them as a .mov uncompressed movie. Or you can, un you can save out all of the frames from every one of the movies as uncompressed TIFFs or bitmaps. And this is where you would do that. Also, on the Omnivore Viewer, there is something called Repair Temp File. And this has been added in the event that you are maybe out of a scene capturing a video. And say it's a two-hour video, and you're an hour and 50 minutes into it, and suddenly the power goes off at that location. You might think you just lost that hour and 50 minutes. But with the Repair Temp File option, the Omnivore will actually save the raw file up to the time that the power went out in that scenario, and it'll save it on the C drive on the system that you were capturing from. So to locate that, you would just click on Repair Temp File. It asks you to please locate the temp file created by the Omnivore during capture. And you'll see that it opens it at the temp file location. And the file you would be looking for would be a file.data file. That's the name of it. You can see that here, file name file.data. And what you would do is you would locate that file and then copy it over to the Omnivore thumb drive. And then when you drop that into the Omnivore viewer, it would bring up that video. So that's yet another feature. Okay, to wrap up, I'd like to just go over a few more things on the utility screen. Software version of your drive uh, will be found on this screen, as well as the serial number of your drive. There is an option to look at or watch an overview video. Uh, in this case, the video that's on the drive is similar to what we're doing today, but much more brief. It, that one runs about six minutes, so if somebody wanted to watch that, they could. There's this reset overlay window. If I go back to the video settings screen, right? In fact, I never closed it from my movie. Let me close that. Now, if I have that out there, and for some reason that window grabbed onto something, I could go to the utility screen and click reset overlay window. Point is, if, if for some reason that window grabs onto some small window somewhere and you're not sure where it is, just come to the utility screen and click reset overlay window and it'll position it as you just saw. There's also a feature called enabling quick save. The quick save feature is something that will help save a lot of time if you're at a scene where you're capturing from a Linux DVR system onto a laptop and you have a C drive or if you're back at the office doing captures and you have a C drive there. If you read the instruction here, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, setting the temp file path and the save to location to the same drive enables Omnivore's quick save feature. So what they're saying here is if I go to browse the temp file path and click the C drive as my temp file path and then go back to output settings and click the C drive also, when I'm saving out a video, it doesn't matter if it's four hours or eight hours long. If I have these two locations set to the same path, the video, when you go to save it out, will save instantly. 
even if it's a if it's a very long video, it doesn't matter. It'll save out as a raw file instantly. There is a warning here that says do not set the temp file path to any USB device, including the Omnivore drive, and that is because it's not supported. The last thing I'd like to point out is no matter what tab you're on, there's a link on the top right side of the Omnivore interface that says help. And if you click on that tab, that will open the Omnivore user guide. And for the Brainiacs out there that want more information or detailed information about the Omnivore, they can open this on the Omnivore drive and they can print out this entire manual if they want, if an agency wanted to use some of this information to put together their own training on the drive. They could either use the video you're watching and or use the user manual that you see here. Additionally, as I've been talking about, on the uh, Omnivore drive itself, I'm going to Windows Explorer here, you will see that when I open up the Omnivore drive, that the guide I just showed you is here. It's called the Omnivore User's Guide. But we also include an Omnivore Linux capture guide. And this is the guide that I was referring to where if you were capturing from a Linux box, it walks you through step by step how you might do that. Again, this guide is available on the drive. If you're an agency who, for some reason, doesn't have a guide like that or you're not familiar with those steps, just give us a call or send us an email. We'd be glad to send you a copy of that guide at no charge. And then finally, um, I'd just like to thank you uh, for watching today's video. This concludes the presentation. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. If you don't yet own an omnivore, or if you already do and wish to purchase more of them, or if you just have additional questions about the omnivore or clear ID or detective, give us a call at 1-800-253-7516 or send us an email at sales at oceansystems.com. We'd be glad to assist you however we can. Thank you for joining and have a great day.